Good morning, everyone. This is what a Reddit user known only as Mr. Anonymous has to say, and I quote, A few months ago, my wife, my daughter, and one of my wife's friend's daughters who is 14 years old all went out together. Let's refer to her as Kate, and she struck me as an intelligent young lady. She seemed to have a good education, was very articulate, fun, and friendly. The topic of gender somehow made its way into the conversation while we were out to dinner, and I was very interested to get a young lady's opinion on how she saw the mainstream's commentary with regards to gender wars and female oppression. Stupin B fell into the trap of thinking that this young lady was mature enough to enter into an open discussion of truth based on statistically proven facts and the social realities of how good it actually is for women to live in the Western world, however, she was unable to do so. While males are harmful and should be held accountable for their actions, when I asked her about the relationship she had with her estranged father, she immediately burst out into tears and fell into my wife's arms like a crying baby. This brought the conversation to a head, and it was at this point that I asked her about the relationship she had with her estranged father. The waitstaff immediately hurried over to her side with tissues in hand as the entire restaurant turned its attention to us. The human masculine half of me emerged and I immediately felt genuine remorse and I made an effort to comfort her. She cried for what seemed like two hours straight, and despite my best efforts to apologize, I honestly felt like a complete and total jerk after the incident. When she finally stopped crying, we took her to her house, and I made the mistake of talking to her as if she were on the same level as me, despite the fact that I was the adult. And to make matters worse, my wife and Kate's mother are no longer friends as a result of this incident. My wife walked her inside, and I later learned that as soon as Kate saw her mom, she burst into tears again. I had to wait another hour for her to be consoled, and to make matters worse, my wife and Kate's mother are no longer friends. For a good number of weeks, I had an awful feeling throughout my body. My wife was just as disappointed in me as I was in myself when she found out what I'd done. Even though my wife and I never got into an argument about it, we didn't talk to each other for over two weeks because I accepted full responsibility for the issue. It was a truly dreadful experience. I accepted responsibility for my actions and made a promise to myself that I would never again engage in conversation with a young woman about any topic that went beyond the weather or the newest music fact. Nevertheless, I can't help but think that this is an example of the best of the female nature. This young lady possesses a high level of intelligence, education, and articulateness. Her enthusiasm to teach me about how the real world works was perfectly in line with the man-hating feminist rant that she was clearly regurgitating. She was very excited to teach me about how the real world works. In addition to giving me a lecture on how terrible things are for women, she simultaneously blamed men for everything. Despite the fact that they were finally acknowledged for nothing. When things got too difficult, the woman card was played, I started crying and I was forced to not only submit, but also apologize for my sins of speaking the truth. I was the adult, so it is undoubtedly my fault. Nevertheless, the true lesson she took away from the experience was that when you are confronted by the truth from a male that hurts your feelings, all you have to do is cry and you'll come out on top. In addition, the man won't just lose, but he'll also be the bad guy because of what he did. As a result, I've reached the point where I'm actually terrified of being in the same room as teenage girls. I used to be a big player with a lot of different ladies before I finally settled down, so I've always had a lot of success when it comes to women. Putting aside the possibility of romantic encounters at this point in time, when the younger generation is being brainwashed, I don't even want to be in the same room as young women. What are your thoughts on this particular topic? Did appear to be nothing more than a meaningless chat that went out of hand when you consider that there is a more significant story taking place here that you aren't even aware of? What if, though, this girl resented the amount of quality time your mother spent with your wife and she harbored feelings of jealousy toward your wife? Therefore, this was the ideal opportunity for you to divorce your wife so that she could receive more attention from her own mother. However, what if, on some level, you never liked this 14-year-old teenager and, on some level, your subconscious intentionally spoke about her absentee father in order to aggravate her, not because it seemed as though she was winning the argument she was having with you, but rather because you actively desired to keep this girl's mother away from your partner in the first place. If you were a boxer, you may find that the real cause for things is buried beneath the surface, even though there is almost always a plausible explanation for why something occurs. When you brought up her father, you effectively kicked her in the genitalia, which is below the belt and in the balls. I believe that he did it subconsciously out of frustration and that your subconscious was so good at hiding its motives from your conscious mind that you genuinely felt bad about it. But deep down inside you, didn't you think that your wife probably rolled her eyes at you like Jada Pinkett Smith when the whole situation was happening? And then she proceeded to give you the old cold shoulder for a few weeks after that. I don't think your wife is very bright if she doesn't realize that it was a possibility that this girl was using the situation to break up her mother's friendship with your wife. If you were a single man and hadn't been wearing those love goggles, you wouldn't have felt horrible about the situation either. 
I don't think your wife is very bright. If everything was planned out by your inner Tyler Durden, then he is aware that your conscious mind will feel remorse and regret for what you have said since he knows your mind will apologize for it. While that was going on, Tyler was attempting to remove this girl's mother from the presence of your wife. It's possible that your subconscious mind and the mind of the 14-year-old daughter came to some kind of conclusion that was in agreement with each other, such as the fact that you wanted her mother to be separated from your wife, and she desired the same thing. After all, nonverbal communication accounts for 90% of all interactions. It's likely that your unconscious mind, which is already aware of the risks associated with being around young women, disrupted your conscious interactions with her in order to protect you from those risks. The relationship you have with your own subconscious mind, which includes acts of self-sabotage, is the most important one you can have in life. It is, in point of fact, oftentimes in your best advantage, I have always been perplexed as to why, when I was a child or a teenager, I would ostensibly say or do the worst things conceivable at the worst possible times. Mathematically speaking, there is no way that I could make such a monumental error each time because I was able to apply what I learned the previous time, so how was this happening? When I was being chased by a bully once, I had the ability to simply get away, but instead of doing so, I stayed still and waited for him to hit me. After some time had passed, the bully continued to press the question upon me, saying, why didn't you run? You could have gotten away. Up until this point, I had no idea why I did the things that I did. I never responded to the question he asked, because everything was so out of the ordinary. It seemed as though my subconscious was aware that the bully's subconscious would be tormented by the seemingly irrational behavior I was exhibiting. As a result, the bully eventually stopped bothering me after that and left me alone. The girl, on the other hand, played the gender card as soon as she was slapped below the belt because she interpreted it as a direct assault on her person. You were losing the fight with your facts and she was winning the battle with her feelings, but then you brought up her father, which messed up her feelings even more, to the point where she went nuclear on you. It seems to be the most reasonable explanation, but I want you to ponder deep down whether or if your subconscious was trying to get rid of her because you didn't like the influence her mother was having on your wife, in which case you are also correct. In today's day and age, there is no use in engaging young women in conversation regarding contentious topics. You won't be sharing your bed with them at all. It won't really educate you because there isn't anything you don't already know about life that they can teach you that they can teach you better than you already know it. Many women in their 20s, 30s, and even later in life are just as problematic. You may have been looking for validation based on your point of view on men's rights and the woke society around you, but she was looking for drama, and she got what she wanted, your emotional pain and suffering. You may have also been looking for validation based on your point of view on men's rights and the woke society around you. There's also the possibility that she saw you as nothing more than a simple source of entertainment that she could have easily substituted for herself if you came out being all pro-feminist. A conservative point of view would be that people don't have ideas. Rather, ideas have people. I believe Nietzsche said that, when it comes to women, I would say that women don't believe in their own opinions. Rather, they believe in what their opinions can do for them. Because of this, women are willing to pretend to adopt a certain point of view or value system that is in direct opposition to yours in order to establish social dominance with teenage girls. Simple questions about themselves should be asked after which you should just listen to them ramble on about unimportant matters. One could say the same thing about the vast majority of women in the single digits. That girl, who you were rumored to have angered with your opinions, received a lot of attention and sympathy from a diner full of strangers in addition to her mother. You played right into her game. Perhaps it was the plan of her subconscious, and it was just crocodile tears. On the other hand, perhaps it wasn't. You will never learn the truth now. You may suggest to your wife that she listen to this, and that she consider the possibility that her mother no longer wanted her as a friend, and that it would be in her best interest if she quit being your wife's friend. As a result of something like this happening, you frequently hear politicians saying that one should not let a good crisis go to waste. I have a firm and firm-held belief that women are exactly the same way. It's really easy for me to agree with you and say that your first mistake was thinking you could have a discussion about facts rather than feelings with a 14-year-old girl who is nothing but a pair of fun bags and hormones, but a deeper part of me says that it's not that simple because over the past year or so, I become more reclusive when it comes to dealing with people in general. My subconscious used to figure out their reasons for associating with me, and it used to make me physically ill because I consciously couldn't stop talking to them before now, I'm consciously aware that most people are just looking to unconsciously use me for some purpose as a scapegoat so that they look justified for doing something bad as a possible emotional tampon so that they can transfer their negative energy that someone else dumped onto them onto me. This realization used to make me physically ill because when it comes to dealing with the vast majority of people, it's almost as if I've developed a thick skin. The only interactions that appear to be genuine are those that take place with persons who work as cashiers or shelf stalkers at retail stores. They have no reason to talk to you, but on the other hand, 
Perhaps they do since it prevents them from carrying out their responsibilities. Stocking the shelves is a part of their job description, and it is probably a part of the job that is preferable to lifting heavy objects and getting a repetitive back injury. However, their boss can't exactly come over to them and tell them to stop trying to help the customer find baking soda on aisle 4 and instead get back to stocking the shelves. If you're anything like me, you don't want anything most of the time from other people and I don't want them to want anything from me either. However, once you realize that the majority of people talk to each other as utility objects, it starts to make you sick to your stomach. This is especially true if you're like me and you don't want anything from other people. Technology enables us to be more independent from each other than ever before. Yet, it encourages the majority of people to make even more of an effort to get in your face. Mr. Anonymous, because of the nature of your connection with your wife, it's likely that you made an effort to comfort the 14-year-old girl. I can guarantee that if you were a single man for six months to a year, you wouldn't have as much sympathy for her pain. This is probably why women are working so hard to make sure that we as men are in relationships all the time when there's a woman in your life, we automatically become less dangerous to other women, both because of her approval and because we have a lower testosterone level. I guarantee that if you were a single man for six months to a year, you wouldn't when I was in my late 20s, I had a conversation very similar to the one you're describing with a woman who was in her late 20s at the time. She understood what I was getting at in terms of the nature of women, but her husband had no idea what the hell was going on or what we were talking about. He noticed that she was becoming very upset, but he had no idea why. This conversation took place about four years ago. This is an example of what the human subconscious is capable of doing when two unconscious minds communicate with one another. It seemed as though we were speaking a foreign language that he was completely unaware even existed. It's almost as if two people who aren't even in the same room together are actually having a conversation together. Perhaps this is how people got the idea that they were possessed by the devil or that God was speaking through them. Anyways, that wraps up my thoughts for the day. I want to thank you for taking your daily allotment of red tablets and please keep in mind, a red pill and it keeps your subconscious mind from putting you in the doghouse in exchange for getting rid of your wife's annoying friends by pissing off their daughters away, the adage reads. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.